God dag. God dag. Så, i dag vi snakker om den flyvende hollander. Jeg hette dette også de fly, flytende hollander. Fly, flytende hollander. Anyway. Um, jeg, normalt jeg gjør jeg denne saken på engelsk for to grunner. En grunn er at vi har ofte gjester fra utlandet. Jeg vet vi har gjester fra utlandet i dag. Også da er det min unnskyldning, fordi jeg er litt mer bekvem på engelsk enn jeg er mer morsomt på engelsk også. Morsomt er interessantere enn, enn, enn bril, mer brillant. Anyway, so vi, um, jeg har ikke så en stor vokabular på norsk. Men, det er ikke viktig. Så, good afternoon. Anyway, we, uh, today we will discuss The Flying Dutchman by Richard Wagner. And this was probably his first great opera, I would say. Um, he had written four bef three before. And uh, the one that comes right before this one, Rienzi, actually was quite a success in Dresden when it was premiered. It's in a typical Wagner fashion that it's quite long. But the Dutchman is, is a normal length, because originally Wagner had hoped that he could produce this piece in Paris, and there was all kinds of talk about how to do it. You know, he had hoped that maybe it would be a curtain raiser, he could do it in a way that would be short enough that they could have a ballet after it, if you can imagine such a thing. <laughs> anyway, but <laughs> that's what they did in Paris. And remember, performances were much longer back then, because you didn't get to go home and play your CDs or watch your DVDs. You saw it, and you saw it once. And that's why in symphonies you get repeats so much, because you didn't get to hear it again right away. So it's a good thing. Anyway, so this piece is somewhat personal, I think, for Wagner, because it's basically about an outsider who's trying to find his way. And that's the way Wagner felt when he was younger. He was trying to find a place where he would be a successful composer. He uh, went to Paris hoping to have a big success and to take over Paris and Europe by storm, and it didn't happen. Actually, the premiere of the piece ended up being somewhere else, and it was successful, but Paris he did not conquer at that point. But you know that he was, uh, he was a Kapellmeister in Riga, that was before this, that he wrote this, and he'd been having some difficulties, and he lost his job, and he ended up being chased around by creditors, and he had to flee. He had to escape with his wife and his dog, Robber. I love that. Dog's name was Robber, and the wife's name was Minna. This was wife number one, not Cosima, who was wife number two. And so they basically had to escape without passports, and they were, they, and managed to get on a funny kind of uh, trading vessel ship called the Thetis, or I don't know if, they, if it's in English or not, if it was Thetis or Tetis or whatever. But it was a very bad journey because the weather was terrible and they got blown all over the place. They actually ended up in Norway for part of the time. And they were supposed to go to London. It took twice as long to get where they were supposed to go and it was really miserable. And this probably inspired Wagner a little bit in the sound color of this opera because it's very stormy music as I will show you. And he also picked up some interesting things from the sailors because the sailors have certain kind of call that they made. He heard them doing this all the time. Hello ho, hello ho, it's a sailor's call. And this motive makes it into the opera quite a lot. And uh, it's very interesting that this piece, it's an early Wagner opera, and it doesn't have the so-called light motifs yet, the light motifs that we know from the later operas, like the ring, where a certain motive or melody has to do with a certain person or in a certain event. Or, cer or a certain structure or something. You know, we know from the ring that, you know, <laughs> that's a sword, right? And you know, the ring. Yeah, that's interesting, the ring. It's in thirds, which means it's a round thing, right? It's very clever. But in this opera, they have, he hasn't really developed that yet. There are two main themes that come all the time that have specific meanings. And one of them is for the Dutchman himself. Yeah, and the other one is for the redemption of the Dutchman, supposedly by a woman who will be true until death. No. Those are the main two themes, you could almost call them leitmotifs, 
and Wagner later tried to act as if the, they were leitmotifs and the whole opera was a music drama, but he hadn't actually come quite to that point yet. Anyway, the opera basically found its, it started finding its form after Wagner went to Paris and he was hoping to get something produced at the opera. And he'd been reading, you know, reading things and this Dutchman legend was already quite well known because it was also, it was in a lot of sources, but also he had probably read Heinrich Heine's version of it, which comes in a book called Aus dem Memoiren von Schablen Wopski. I think that's his name. It's a very strange name. Anyway, and this basically is the same story about the, the Dutchman who basically says, I'm going to sail around the Cape of Good Hope. I think it's Good Hope. Any Cape will do. Uh, I will sail around this Cape <laughs> until hell freezes over. You know, I will do it no matter how terrible the weather is. I will do this. And the, the devil heard him say this and he said, yes, fine, you're cursed and you have to do this forever and ever. Except I will let you go on land every seven years and if you can find a woman who will be true to you until death, you can be released from this terrible thing. So, uh, because the devil doesn't believe that a woman would be able, he'd be able to find a woman who would do this. So that's the reason he allows this. So I think in the, in the story he does find a woman, but he gets so bored with bourgeois life that he goes back to the sea. <laughs> and I guess she runs after him. I think she's called Mrs. Flying Dutchman in the, in the story. But she, <laughs> she runs after him and she commits suicide. So, you know. But anyway, in the, in the opera, it's not it's not the devil who decides that he gets to go on land, it's a Gottes Engel, you know, it's the angel of God who decides that this poor man deserves to have some kind of an out, a redemption. And so he comes on land every seven years looking for somebody to fulfill this. And we're at the re most recent one now. Um, more background information that's rather interesting about this opera is that it first was set in Scotland, not Norway. The original version is in Scotland, and there are a few remnants of the Scottish version left a little bit because in one part, in one part Eric, who is the boyfriend of Senta before the Dutchman shows up, and of course he's quite annoyed when another man shows up and she's already in love with him before she hardly meets him, um, he sings about how he wanted to win the Highlands beauty, you know, and the, I don't know, how, do you have a lot of Highlands here in Norway? You do? Well, but, but it's from the Scottish version, I guess he left it. And also, there is a mention of Sandvike, yeah, because uh, Dalan says, oh, it's Sandvike there. And they, we, have to, uh, we have to just wait until the storm goes so we can get really closer to home. I don't see why they didn't just get off and take the flea tuga, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, maybe they didn't have it then. It might, it might have been another Sandvike. There's a lot of Sandvikes here I'm just in, in this country. I think it, it's uh, Sandvike somewhere else, but anyway. So it was based in Scotland originally, and actually some of the names are even different. The, the father figure in this opera is named Dalant. He's the, he's the sea captain of his ship. And in Scottish version, his name is Donald. And then Eric is called George in the other version. It's quite interesting. But anyway, I don't know why they didn't get Henrik as a little more of a Norwegian name. He should be Henrik, don't you think? We have a Henrik singing Eric anyway, so we just pretend. Okay. So, I, now we'll talk a little bit about the music and what happens. I'm going to skip the overture until the end because the overture basically was written after the piece and he basically took all the important themes and put them in the overture and they kind of come and go through the entire thing and I think once you know the, the music from the opera better the overture makes a lot more sense. Um, anyway, as I said, um, Wagner wanted to do this in Paris. It was um, not taken up by the Paris Opera. The only thing they managed to do was they bought the story. They bought the scenario and they paid him 500 francs, I think. And then he went off and they actually wrote, they did produce an opera called The Flying Dutchman, Le Vaisseau Fantôme, with another composer named Pierre-Louis Ditch, which is, you can actually hear a recording of it. There's a recording with Mark Binkowski who does the Wagner version and the, the French one, which is very pale by comparison, you can imagine. And it was dropped after 11 performances, I think. <laughs> Whereas the Wagner one has gone on to be great in history. Anyway, so, what ended up happening was that Rienzi was a big success in Dresden and so they were more than happy in Dresden to mount this piece. And so it was premiered there and it was a very good success and then you know, the rest is history. Okay, so what happens? We're in the first scene we have very stormy music. <laughs> Hello. 
Remember that hollow hole we talked about? There it is. There it is. That's the sailor's call that he heard supposedly on the boat when he was suffering trying to get to London. And uh, <clears throat> then we have them going on and on with their ho hey ho ya hoo ha and uh, the uh, ho hey hey ya ho hey hey ya hello hello and this figure this kind of turning figure is uh, very important actually because the Norwegians sing it all the time in this opera and it even has a sex change in the second act but I'll, I'll tell you about that when we get there. But it's, it's, it keeps going through the opera all the time. In one guise or another. Anyway, and you notice all the stormy music, right? Yeah, every time this is the waves rushing and getting more and more violent. And this is something you hear quite often in the piece. Anyway, so uh, <clears throat> on comes Daland, who is the father figure, the captain of the Norwegian ship, and he says, oh boy, we're really off course here. We were so close, and we ended up in Sandvika, you know? <laughs> anyway, so, but the, the, the storm starts to calm down. When, when the storm starts to come down, the, the wave music starts to change. See, the, it, this is more nice wave music. instead of this, which is more violent. And so he says, well, I guess we'll just stay here a while until the storm calms, calms down, which it does. He says, boys, you can take a little break, all the sailors. It's just one sailor that he wants to have watch, you know, keep watch in case something happens in the, in the storm or, you know, or some ship appears or something. So he asks um, the steersman, the storyman, if he'll please stay behind. And the steersman says, okay, fine, I'll do it. All right, so he stays behind. Now this motive will become quite important later it's basically a, a party motive. It's for everybody to celebrate and have a good time. It will be very big later on in the opera. When it, you know, it's played by everybody. <laughs> nice German dance. <laughs> but anyway, it's just a hint of it now. Because the Steuermann is already thinking, oh, I can't wait till we get, get home and have a party. But, but not, not yet. Because there's still a storm. All right. So, anyway, he sings a song to himself to try and keep awake. It's kind of like a, an, I guess, an, Wagner's version of an English sea shanty or something. Uh, he sings, Mit Gewitter und Sturm aus fernen Meer, mein Mädel bin dir da. He says, you know, basically from... Uh, all this stormy weather, I'm still close to you, my girl, and I will get back to you sometime, you know? If only there was a south wind, I would never have to be away from you so long. Mein Mädel, wenn ich Südwind wär, ich nimmer Wolken zu dir. Ach, lieber Südwind, blass noch mehr. Mein Mädel, verlangt nach mir. It's very sweet, it's very sweet. But anyway, um, in the end of the first verse, there's still kind of some stormy stuff going on. You hear the orchestra building up. <laughs> and anyway, he, he started to get very sleepy, but he tries to do the second verse. Von der Südenske Stadt aus weitem Land. He's getting slower now. Ach, ich habe an dich gedacht. There's still a little bit of nervous C going on under here a little bit. And uh, anyway, he starts to fall asleep little by little. But near the end of it, something is happening because you hear this, this dramatic music and you hear the Dutchman's motive. 
and a big crash comes in the orchestra, and that means that the, uh, the anchor of the phantom ship, as we call it, has dropped, and somehow the, the Steuermann is just too sleepy to notice. Maybe because he's a tenor, too, I don't know. But anyway, <laughs> but anyway but, uh, anything is possible. So uh, let's say he sings his last line. Oh, yeah, oh, oh. big crash. There's a big tam-tam in the orchestra. Goes, Did you hear it? Yeah, you heard it, yeah? It's a great moment. I love it. But the uh, <coughs> Steuermann is still dreaming about the party. He doesn't even notice. How can he not notice all that noise? I don't get it. But anyway. And then we hear... Remember that motive I told you about? It's again. I think it's just going to sleep. Little by little. And he's gone. And then we hear the Hollander's motive. And the Hollander himself appears. And this music is very strange. It, it, let me play it for you. Two things are very interesting. There's the tritone. I th love talking about tritones because that means that the, the two notes are kind of directly between an octave. And it, it's called the devil's interval because it's a weird sound, right? Which is in contrast to the, the uh, perfect fifth, which is this. And um, actually the perfect fifth is used in the Dutchman music, like the very beginning of the piece. Even the Dutchman's motive is made up of perfect fifths. And that gives you a feeling of expanse, horizon, right? Something very open. But this, if it were like this, that's the devil's interval. And that's not very nice. And that's what we hear here. And this, and this strange music is the Dutchman walking on you know, walking on solid ground for the first time in seven years, because he's been, you know, on a ship like this for seven years, so it's no wonder he has little trouble walking, you know? And he says, the time is up, the seven years are past, and here I am again, on land. Basically, he's giving up hope already. He says, you're, he's talking to the devil, your, your uh, how should I say, trots, your defiance is, is not going to move and I'm going to be suffering probably forever. That thing I'm looking for on the earth, I probably will never find it. And so we end up in the first part of the aria, which has this kind of stormy music, which is um, related to the Dutchman's theme. It's a kind of outline of the, of the, it's kind of in there. It's in there, kind of. So we have... Schlund, 
der hat sich voll Sehnsucht mich hinab. Doch ach, den Tod, ich fand ihn nicht. Da wo der Schiff erfuhr, ich bargrab, blieb mein Schiff nicht in dem Begrot. Doch ach, mein Grab schloss sich nicht. So weiter. This music keeps going on and on and on. It's like perpetual motion in the sea that, that he lives with every day. He can't get out of it. Terrible stormy seas all the time moving around. It's very it's not a very nice way to live. Anyway. Then we get to a middle section after he said that I never will find death, I never can get a grave, I have to go on for eternity, going through this terrible situation. And then he speaks to the angel of God, and he says, I ask you, is there some way you can heal me from this terrible you know, defiance and, and, and this making fun of me and my terrible, terrible fate? Dich frage nicht, gepriesener Engel Gottes, der meines Heils Bedingung mir gewahr. And so, and so weiter. But of course that doesn't last. He becomes... He becomes very negative again, and he says, there's probably no way anything will happen for me. It's hopeless. And we get to the concluding section of this monologue. And we have this music. Nur eine Hoffnung soll mir bleiben, nur eine And so weiter. Anyway, um, this ends up in a big climax at the end. He said he'd rather, he said, when all the dead will rise, I hope I will finally turn into nothingness as I wish. I can't stand it anymore. Please end waves, end all your, 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 your waviness. <laughs> and, and please, eternal nothingness or you know, a non-existence, please take me. And it's interesting that the aria ends in big blazing C major because everything is usually so dark with the, the Hollander, but somehow it ends in a, in a major key anyway, even though maybe there is a little hope after all. You never know, right? Uh, he says, you, uh, you're waves. <laughs> interesting it changes color and you hear an echo of his crew singing the same thing but it sounds very different this time also have to go along with him, the poor crew. It's not only him. The captain makes a decision and the whole bunch of them have to go along forever and ever on this ship. I wonder if they all get to look for wives too. But I, I don't know. He doesn't mention that. <laughs> anyway. So, here comes Daland. He's come back from his little nap or whatever he had. I like this, this music you hear with him a lot. stuff. I call that Dalan's curiosity. 
because he, it plays a lot when he's interested in, in the Dutchman and what's happening. It's just kind of a simple little motive. There's the party motive again. And then the Dutchman motive. Hey, hola! Stoyerman! He says, what's going on, Stoyerman? And the Stoyerman says, Sist nichts, sist nichts, nothing. And he's so asleep, he sings his song again, but he gets the words turned around this time. Ach, liebes Mädchen, blass noch mehr, mein Südwind. Now that was taken out, that version, for many years because it has different connotations now than it did back then. But we put it back in, and, and our wonderful director, Andreas Homaki, also wants it. You can find it in the original version of the score. Anyway, Balan says, what? You don't see anything? There's a ship right there. Ah, really? So he, uh, has to, he calls out to the ship and he says, you know, who's there? Wer da? There's echoes. Nobody answers. Wer da? kind of spooky music. It looks like they're just as lazy as we are. Nothing's happening. But then Dalan says, oh, wait a minute. I think I see the captain. And he says, hey, hola, see man, nenne dich. Westlandes. Name yourself. What land do you come from? And here's another motivic thing that we hear a lot in this section of the opera. very melancholy theme. Uh, basically, it's the sadness and the loneliness, I think, of the Hollander. And the Hollander speaks. Weit komm ich her, verwirrt bei Sturm und Wetter, ihr mir den Ang. Plots. Basically saying, I've had a rough time. Is there any way I can share this anchor place with you? And we get uh, Dalan's happy, curious music again. Behütes Gott, Gastfreundschaft, kennt der Seemann, wer bist du? He says, of course, I know guest friendship. And who are you, by the way? And he says, I'm Dutch. Hollander. And Dalan says, it's okay. It's nice to meet you. Got some gross. It says, I guess you've been having some trouble with this storm as well as me. And uh, I says, Where, have you had a damaged ship? Is it being okay? No, the Hollander says, my ship is fine. It never has any damage, which is unfortunate. He'd love it to have damage because maybe he'd sink and he'd die, which he would, wants to do. But the ship never gets damaged. It's always strong and fine, unfortunately. So it's kind of a bitter thing. It never gets damaged. <laughs> and, and he talks about his his stormy life, and we have the motive again, that sad motive, lonely. That wasn't my fault, the pedal did that. Anyway, this develops that only thing he wants is to find some kind of rest, his, his homeland somehow, and this kind of passionate stuff. Das eine nur, nachdem ich brenne, ich find es nicht, mein Heimatland. I never find my home, that's all I want. Anyway, um, he says to Daland, uh, would you let me stay in your house one night and I will give you lots of nice jewels because my ship is full of precious riches. And that, of course, makes Daland very interested and we have Daland's curious happy motive again. 
wie wunderbar soll deine Wort ich glauben. So that really comes very often with Daland when he's especially interested or curious about something. Anyway, so this goes on. The Dutchman says, yes, I have a, a, a absolute, I have lots of riches I can give you, no problem, just let me stay for the night. And he says, the Dutchman says, what good are my, my riches? I have no wife and no child, and I never find my home. And if I can stay with you, that'd be wonderful. And uh, Dalin says, yes, sir. Was muss ich hören? And here comes the important question. Hast du eine Tochter? Yeah. <laughs> and Dalin says, Wir war ein treues Kind, sie sei mein Weib. Yes, that goes from... Um, Two, two sentences, he says, do you have a daughter? I want to marry her. Good. So that good. And that, of course, makes Dalin so excited. He almost does a little dance. It turns into... Yay! Wie hört ich recht, meine Tochter sein Weib? Er selbst spricht aus den Gedanken. Fast wirst ich, wenn unentschlossen ich bleib. Er müsst ihn vor Satz wanken. He's so greedy, because he loves the idea of having a rich son-in-law. Oh, I'm going to I'm gonna have lots of jewels, and I'm going to, oh, it's going to be marvelous. And I get to go to Amsterdam and, and do all the fun things there. No, and so uh, <coughs> it's, it's, he's beside himself. It's only... This character actually has a little bit of humor in him because he's, you know, he's, he's, he's kind of funny. And we have a little duet with the two voices going together where the Hollander is singing legato lines even though it's in major, he's always melancholy. Beautiful long legato while... Daland is still chirping in the background, like, you know, this is Daland. Wüsst ich, ob ich wach oder träume, kann ein Eidam willkommen sein. So it's nice, you have this contrast of very legato, singing, and this in the background. Anyway, when they get that off their chests, then we get kind of business music. Fremdling hab ich eine schöne Tochter mit treue Kindesleib ergeben mir. Yes, I have a wonderful daughter, and I'm sure she'd make a very good wife for you. And uh, Dutchman is very pleased to hear that. And uh, do I get to meet her soon? Yes, sure, you can come over right away and, and meet her. And so after this intermediate section, we have... First of all, we hear that there's nice winds, because Dalan says, when we have a nice wind, we can, we can sail back to where we belong. Remember my nice wind motive? My bad wind motive? And my nice wind. And he says, you shall meet her. And if you like her, the Dutchman says, she'll be mine. But then the dark part comes back, that doubt. Wird sie mein Engel sein? This music comes back a few times, actually. That kind of, you know, this kind of dark Tristan chord. It's just spaced differently, so it's not really Tristan yet, but it's, you know, dark. Wird sie mein Engel sein? He says, I hope I get out of this terrible suffering. It's dark music again. Which basically leads to a kind of a coda where Daland is again getting very excited with dotted rhythms and fast music because he can't wait to get home and get this whole thing going. Get So this is like the coda, the, you know, the, the, the fast uh, cabaletta part of the, of the scene. And there's a lot of structure like this too. You'll have a, 
you'll have a kind of moving section at the beginning, then you'll have a different contrasting section in the middle, and then you'll have a, a third section, which will be like the coda or the uh, fast, fast bit. It's not a cabaletta because nobody's going, whoa, 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 there's none of that. But it's basically, there's differences. So, guess what? There's a south wind already. <laughs> Everybody gets all excited, and we have hollow ho again from the, the sailors. Hollow ho, hollow ho, hollow ho, 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 ho. Party time, right? And the wind will take us there. You have that in the wind section. Yep, because they're all excited they're going to get home. And the, of course, the sailors start their ho 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 Remember that motive, because it's going to come back a lot. Anyway, the whole chorus then takes up the Storyman's song. I guess it's a popular song. They all seem to know it. Except it's big this time. My first act, which um, in our version goes on to the second act because that was the original version that Wagner wrote, but when he decided to make it the three acts, he wrote this rather perfunctory ending. <laughs> yes, it was originally conceived as a one-act piece that went through, but when it went to Dresden, he put it into three acts. He also moved the, you know, changed it to, to Norway instead of Scotland. But what, you know, what it really is supposed to do is be one big piece. And the original version went right on. Uh, let's see if let's play the last bars a bit. again. Uh, oh, remember that? But like I said, it's going to have a sex change now, because the, the women are going to take it up. Must be something Norwegian. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Or maybe it was Scottish, because it's the same music. And this music we will hear when we end up in the second act, in the home of Daland. And uh, there are a lot of women working at their spinning wheels. And you hear this, you know... <laughs> that's the spinning wheels. This goes on through the whole scene. That's the female chorus, in case you didn't <laughs> recognize it. Yeah. It's interesting, the first, uh, whole first act, we only hear male voices. In the second act, we finally hear some female voices. It's like Siegfried. Siegfried, you don't hear a woman's voice for at least two and a half hours. I mean, <laughs> with the first act, there's only men. The second act, the first thing you hear is a bird. And that's, that's the first time you hear it. And then you have to wait to the very end that Brynhilde wakes up to have a real woman singing, you know? It's only animal life for, you know, anyway. So anyway, so we have, here we are. 
their music is based on this, this little motive that turns all the time. And they sing their nice little spinning song, even with a middle section about how my, my, my sweetheart is on the, at the sea, he's thinking about the house and, and missing us, you know. My Schatz ist auf dem Meere draus, er denkt nach Haus ans fromme Kind, ein gutes Retten braus und saus, ach gibst du Wind, er käm geschwind. Ach gibst du Wind, if you give us some wind, you bring him back to us. And we keep spinning. Er käm geschwind. On and, and on and on. The music gets very happy. And we meet the character of Mari. Mari is kind of the nurse or overseer or takes care of Zen Zenta. The Zenta is the is the leading soprano, and she's also the daughter of, of Daland, the sea captain. And she's actually, she has a you know, slightly better position than some of these other people because she is the daughter of a sea captain. And uh, so she has a slightly different social status. So she's not actually spinning and singing that song. Actually, she hates that song. And she wishes they'd stop singing it, which she does eventually say. Stop singing that dumb song. But that's, you have to have three verses of it first before, <laughs> before that happens. Anyway. Off, off we go. Anyway, so um, Mary says, oh, uh, come on, keep working, girls. Um, do, don't you want, don't you want to you know, do nice things for your, your boyfriends? The, the girls say, shut up, we're not finished with our song yet. So we go again. <laughs> and we have the whole thing again. All right, fine. Anyway, Mary says, you bad girl. Senta, you should be doing something. You should be spinning. Why don't you spin? Even though you're better than everybody else, you should be spinning. And the girls say, oh, she doesn't need to because she has, you know, she's not worried about getting anybody from the sea to come to her and, and you know, marry her and make her happy. She already has a boyfriend. You know, he's a hunter, so he's important. She doesn't have to worry about any of that, you know. Sie hat nicht tot, dass sie sich eilt. Ihr Schatz nicht auf dem Meere weilt. Bringt ihr nicht Gold? Bringt ihr doch wild. Man weiß ja, was ein Jäger gibt. Ha! They all laugh at her. And then we hear... Recognize that? That's the redemption motive, right? And Senta, this is the first notes you hear out of Senta. She doesn't actually say anything. She just sings and hums. It depends on the Senta. Some like to hum, some like to sing. But anyway, we have a singing one, I think, this time. Anyway, Senta has somehow gotten very interested in this Flying Dutchman story. And there's also, strangely enough, a portrait of, of the Dutchman hanging in the house. And so she knows this story. And, and Mary says, oh, there she goes again. Da seht ihr immer vor dem Bild, willst du dein ganzes junges Leben verträumen vor dem Konterfei? There you go again, in front of that picture, all the time. Are you going to spend your whole life dreaming in front of that silly picture? I don't see why they just don't take it down. I mean, it's just, you know. That, that would solve the problem, I think. But anyway, Senta finally sings, what are you talking about? I can't help feeling for this poor man. And Mary and the girls start laughing. That's ridiculous, this Senta. She's, she seems to be falling in love with a picture. Anyway, um, and Mary says, I can't do anything about it. She's just, you know, she's way, she's way out there to see already, I think. Anyway, so the girls start laughing again, and... and uh, talking about Eric, and Eric would not be very happy if the Flying Dutchman actually showed up, which is actually what happens. Um, but they think he would, you know, he'd be very angry and he'd shoot his gun. Senta says, stop laughing at me. You're making me very angry. And the girls then decide to sing the third verse of that wonderful spinning song, this time in really loud. To, I mean, it was sweet the first time, kind of. 
this time they almost yell it at her. She's, she's going crazy. <laughs> Finally, Santa can't stand it anymore. Mach den dummen Lied am Ende. And it stops singing that dumb song. I, I'm going insane. Why don't we do something else? I'll sing you, I know, let Mary sing this, this uh, ballad of the Flying Dutchman. And Mary says, oh no, not again. No, I can't do it. And then Santa says, well, I'll sing it myself then. Listen to this. It must be very moving for you. And so the girls sit down. Mary says, I will keep spinning my wheel. I don't need to hear this again. And then we get to the famous ballada or ballad where Senta describes the whole situation of the Dutchman and what happens. It's interesting also that this piece was in the first version was a tone higher, which some sopranos like, but some of them don't, because the part is very high anyway. We're lucky because we have a wonderful Senta here who has fantastic high notes. Her name is Erika Sunogot, and uh, you'll love her. And, but we're singing the ballad in the normal version because uh, that's what that's the standard version of what's done. And so we hear the, the Dutchman music, open fifths, there's the C, right? And it starts with Senta taking the motive of the Hollander apart. Yo little bits of it. And then the, the real ballad starts where she tells the whole story. Traft ihr das Schiff im Meer an, blutrot die Segel schwarz der Mast. Where she basically tells the story about how the the ship is in the ship is in the sea and it has blood red sails and a black mast and there's the pale man on board and he has to go without rest and the wind is blowing right and again the same stuff i wore my blood red shirt for this thing you notice that somebody put up a ship isn't that nice i don't know where it came from but i it doesn't have the blood red sails, so I just thought I'd put some on. So anyway, just to get a little more feeling for it. All right, all right, all right. This is usually the color of the blood red sails. Not, this is blood color, not this, but anyway. Anyway, sorry. This is just so you get the, the right feeling. All right? Is that, yeah? Okay. I can see you're all deeply touched by the, moved by my red sails here. Maybe, maybe that's enough. Yes, anyway. Anyway, so the first verse, she basically tells the story of him on the sea. And then at the end of it, we have our redemption motive. Because I think already she's got ideas in her head. And uh, <coughs> she talks about how only a woman can save the Dutchman. Only the, the pale man can find redemption through a true woman who will be faithful to him until death. Another thing that's interesting about this is that every time, often when this motive comes, it's played by the wind section in the orchestra. So it's just people blowing into instruments. So there is wind involved even in this. There's wind, the Dutchman in his ship, and the redemption has wind in it too. It's just different kinds of wind. Anyway, so she starts in her second verse. And did you notice, know this is kind of interesting, the beginning of the theme, which is an inversion of, it goes the other direction. That's the Dutchman's motive. Not that, isn't it? But this one goes down. So she's kind of the mirror of him, hopefully. That's just a little little information you can say to your neighbor in the audience. Did you notice that in the ballad that she's singing? <laughs> a four, she's coming down a fourth. I just hope you noticed that. You know. <laughs> anyway, so anyway, she's talking about the, the sails and all this stuff. It's the same thing. And this, the second time, it's interesting, the, the women in the chorus, or the, the spinning ladies, they are getting moved by this whole story, and they sing along with her. 
after she sung this, and this the middle part. Ach, könntest du bleicher seemann es finde. Oh, you poor pale seaman, if you could only find it, and pray to heaven that there will be a true woman for you somewhere. Anyway, so we get to the third verse. The third verse is interesting because it's different than the first two. The first two keep going in one tempo, but this verse, the third verse, stops and starts a little bit. And she's, this is when she says, every seven years he gets to go on land. For Anker alle sieben Jahr ein Weib zu freien geht er ans Land. It's like he stopped, finally stopped on land. Then he is trying every seven years to woo a woman. And he says, he's never found a true woman. When the music gets slower and more legato and sad, he's never found that true woman. have that stormy music again because he's condemned to be on the ship sailing the seas forever. Then the women in the chorus take over the redemption theme. They sing it. Senta does, Senta does not sing it this time because something's happening to her. Yeah, she's preparing for the high passage coming up on the next page. So she's thinking, oh, well, a big part. Could be. No, anyway. The, 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 because what happens is she kind of snaps and she all of a sudden realizes, I'm the one I'm the one that's going to save him. And the, the music gets fast and passionate. that the, in the middle of it, when she says, through me, you will find your salvation, we have <laughs> that's this theme, but it's this time fast and very energetic. It's like a triumphant version of it. <laughs> anyway, this last uh, bit of Senta must have been so impressively dramatic and loud that even Eric, the boyfriend, somehow has to appear at this moment, which he does. <laughs> Boom. Like I, hear, I hear my girlfriend singing high notes. What's going on? <laughs> so, anyway, so he... he oh, <laughs> and the girls say, oh, heavens, help us, you know. Uh, and then he shows up. Santa, willst du mich verderben? Santa, do you want to ruin me? And Eric, help Eric! Help us! She's gone crazy, you know? She's crazy. Anyway, um, and Eric says, by the way, your father's coming home. <gasps> father's coming home. Now, of course, all the women go, oh my God, all the crew members are coming home. They're coming home, and it gets very, very nervous. Like, oh my God. She's in the heim, she's in the heim. And this leads to a very fast chorus where all the women get, get so excited, like they have to go home and clean the house and cook dinner and make sure everything's ready. And so I call this the chicken chorus because it, because it gets so fast. It's like, you know, it's almost like comedy. It's like comedy. They get all, they're terribly excited, and finally they go away. Of course, that leaves Eric and Senta alone, where they can have a discussion, and he's very concerned because he he knows the father's coming back, and he's always worried that Dalan's going to bring back some man who has a lot of money. 
that Senta will have to marry, even though the two of them have been a couple for some time. And we end up with some very kind of lyric music. It, it's almost Italian in its, in its lyricism. And he sings, it's like a little aria, where he says, I've always been true to you in my heart till death. All the things I have, my, my happiness as a hunter, I want to share with you. And your father seems to, you know, support this. And it starts with a clarinet solo. Mein gut, mein It's very tonal and nice, but then when he's talking about his heartbreaking, the music becomes more chromatic. Yeah, just more because it's it's more painful. Anyway, he says, "Senta, how you know, if my heart breaks, who will speak for me then?" And she replies with music that's very similar, but in another key. We're in B flat with Eric. She responds in another key. She's up to uh, G flat. Actually, it's a, if you want to say actually, it's two keys down, but it sounds lofty. It sounds high somehow. Ach, schweige Erik jetzt. Lasst mich hinaus, den Vater zu begrüßen. Wenn nicht, wie sonst? She says, oh, please, Eric, let me go. I want to go greet my father. Basically, she's saying, I don't want to talk about this. But she says, I want to greet my father. And we have, and this music always, I think, is trying to hold Senta back from running away. She says, I have to go to port. You're trying to get rid of me. No, let me go. And these chords, he says, let me go. You want to run away from me. Let me go. You want to run away from me. This will become important later because it's as if it's the conflict between the two of them. And it's used a lot when Eric and Senta are arguing with each other. Anyway, so he says, you want to leave me, but not yet, not yet because I want to sing verse two of my aria. So we'll try again. You've touched me with your love. That's wonderful. He tries again. It doesn't do much good. She's back in her other key. And she's trying to make him feel better. She says, you don't really doubt my feelings for you, do you? And even though that you can hear that the two keys, they're in two different keys, so they're not really connected. If they were really connected, she'd sing it in the same key. But she doesn't. She sings it in another key. I like this. I, li I think keys have certain properties. They have certain feelings to them. You know, this one is a nice, solid, you know, masculine, nice key. This one, it, there's something more etheric about something more lofty in the sky. And her head is definitely in the clouds. There's no question <laughs> about it. Anyway, so, so they're arguing some more, and he's saying, you know, I heard you singing the ballad again. What is that supposed to mean? And she says naively, I'm just a child. I don't know what I sing. Right. Anyway, anyway. <coughs> yeah, right. We heard that one before. Anyway, and he says, he's looking at her. He says, you're so pale. I'd, shouldn't I be afraid of that? And she says, how can you be afraid of that? And thinking of that poor man's terrible fate. <laughs> Eric says, can't you think about my terrible feeling, my terrible pain, Senta? Doesn't it move you anymore? What can be your suffering? Don't you know about this poor man's fate? Kennst jedes unglückseligen Schicksal du? This is a very beautiful melody. 
It only comes once, though. She describes his, his, his pain and how she, she feels it. Wouldn't it be nice if he could finally find some peace instead of this terrible pain? That goes through his heart. Ach, was die Ruhe für ewig in Nam, wie schneidend weh durchs Herz mir zieht, wie schneidend weh durchs. I love that. How that, that note, it goes against the chords. It, it really is painful. It's better in the right register. The Herz mir zieht, wie schneidend weh. Yeah, it really hurts. Uh, anyway, Eric says, oh my God, I, it's true, that terrible dream I had. Es bahnt mich mein unzähliger Traum. Gott schätze dich. Saat hat er dich und ganz... I love this, such ugly chords. He says, Satan has taken you over, he's ensnared you. And the music gets extremely violent. Actually, that music, it's, he uses that trick again. It's almost exactly the same music in, in Walküre, which is later on when Sieglinde is going a little bit mad after having uh, slept with Sigmund in the second act and she's feeling very guilty and she's always afraid that Hunding and the whole clan are after them and that the dogs are going to come and, and catch them and you, you, you'll notice that the, the music's quite similar. Uh -huh. <laughs> Those are supposed to be hounds howling. It's very similar to this. It's a, nice, it's a nice technique. You can also tell your friends that. When it, because, because there's a nice, uh, there's a nice pause after this. There's a whole bar off, so you can go, you use that again in Valkyrie. Oh. And, and then Eric says, I'm gonna tell you about my, my dream. And he says, you know, on a high mountain, I was lying, dreaming, and I s was thinking, and I saw a, a strange ship approaching. Ah, there it is. And you hear the Dutchman motive. And he says, two men got off, and they were coming close to the land. One of them was your father. And Santa says, and the other one? And he says, I, I thought I recognized him with his strange features and his, his somewhat pale look and his dark his dark eyes or dark looks, he says. And yes, it was that semen. And what happens to me, says Senta. He says, well, they come to the house and you run to your father. And uh, basically what happens is you become united with him and you, f you are passionate towards him and you kiss him. And she says, and then? <laughs> I don't know, but that, thank God it stops right there. Uh, <laughs> and he says, then I saw you disappear into the sea. <gasps> Remember our motive? Triumphant. And it's interesting. Now, the keys are, this is something you probably wouldn't notice, but the first time it comes in B flat. But she sings, and now it's gone up a key to C. What we're waiting for is when it finally gets to D at the end, when, the, when things really happen between them. Anyway, so Eric sees that it's quite hopeless to have any more discussions today because she's off in, you know. And so we hear, remember these notes I talked about? That's, that's the conflict, I think. Senta, Eric. Anyway, we have quiet music again. Senta is left alone, and she's singing quietly to herself the redemption motive. Oh, if you could only find, you pale seaman, find the woman who is right for you. Pray to heaven that soon you will find a woman 
who is true to you until... Ah! And guess who comes through the door? <laughs> it's the Hollander. And he looks just like the picture. So she's very... She actually doesn't talk for maybe six or seven minutes. They're both... Uh, anyway, so in comes Papa, in comes Dalant, and he wants to hug his daughter. I call this hug music, because it comes whenever he's waiting for her to come by and hug, and, but she doesn't move. She just stares at the Dutchman. It's like the father's not even there. And I think it's hugs, because it has thirds in it. You know, it's one note, one note here, and another note here. So for me, the two notes make a hug. And it, and it moves around, you know? We have the timpani again. Another hope for a hug. Nothing. Anyway, he says, my child, you see me standing here. No hug, no kiss, nothing. And she just, oh, I'm sorry, she does talk before six minutes. She does say one thing. She says, hi there, Dad. Um, tell me, who's the, who's the stranger? And I guess still no hug. He says, no hug? You ask me this question, I'll sing an aria. a nice classical aria. Dalin says, would you like to know who this man is? He is a seaman just like me, and I'm giving him Gastrecht tonight. I'm letting him stay at the house. Möchst du, mein Kind, den fremden Mann willkommen heißen? Seemann ist er gleich mir, das Gastrecht spricht er an. He, and he basically talks about him a little bit, but he can't help talking about the fact that he's rich. That, that comes very soon into it. it says, you know, and we have this kind of snake-like music. And he's also saying to the Dutchman, see, she's very beautiful, isn't she? You like, you know, you, you want her, right? Because I want to be rich too, you know. And <clears throat> anyway, he says she's really a great, she's a great credit to her race. She's so fantastic, I'm going to sing a cadenza. You know, see, it's like old Italian opera. But the Dutchman's thinking something else. He's thinking, He says it at the end of the first act. Will she be my angel? But he, nobody sings it this time. You just hear it in the orchestra because it's inside his head. Then we have this music again. Dalan turns towards Senta. And wants what? A hug. No hug. Okay, so I'll sing another verse of my aria. Möchst du, mein Kind, dem Mahanne freundliche dich erweisen? Yes, would you like to welcome this man to our home? Maybe you want to give him your hand and he could become your husband. Reich ihm die Hand, den Bräutigam sollst du ihn heißen. Stimmst du dem Vater bei, ist morgen er dein Mann. That makes her a little nervous for some reason, just for a second. But it's interesting that he sings kind of bridal music. He says, give, give him your hand and you'll, be, you'll become your husband. <laughs> It's like a wedding march, even in the same key as another one. That's also in B-flat major, from another opera by some composer, I don't remember. <laughs> anyway, Isma, anyway, so he's, he says, you know, you can get married tomorrow and you can exchange rings and everything's wonderful and there's still, nobody's talking, you know. And then he finally gives up on the hug, this kind of sad version of the hug music. Nobody's talking. 
and says, maybe I'm in the way. Finally gets the, kind of gets the clear, clarity to realize he should leave. But not before he sings a coda to the aria, of course. Merck stood in edlen man gewinnen Glaube mir, solch Glück wird nimmer neu, wird nimmer neu. Anyway, we finally, he does finally go. And you hear the motive when he says, he's a seaman like me. So proud. But he's finally leaving, and we get the Dutchman motive. This time, right away, we have the redemption motive right next to it. So they're getting closer. And uh, one of the major scenes of the opera, this is probably the most extended scene, through composed scene, many phases, and, and it harks a little bit, it seems a little bit like some of the later Wagner the exchange between two people and how things developed. It um, starts very, very quietly with the Dutchman singing in a cappella, which means he has no accompaniment when he first starts, which makes him sound very, very alone and very isolated. Spricht dieses Menschenbild zu mir. As it seems like you know, from ancient times, this wo this girl's picture speaks to me. And then we move into a, another section with more more of a melodic line. Wohl hob auch ich voll Sehnsucht meine Blicke aus tiefer Nacht empor zu einem Wein. And he asks himself if he's feeling some kind of passion. Is it possibly love? And this excitement finds itself in the music through use of chromatic harmony. You can feel the, the rising passion in the music. He's burning inside. Is it love? No, it isn't. It's the longing for my salvation. Senta speaks finally. Versank ich jetzt in wunderbares Träumerei, was ich erblicke, ist ein Fall. Is it amazing? Am I? Is it real or is it? It's an imagination, what's happening. And the two voices start to blend together. And then Senta takes on her own version of, of the theme that the Dutchman, sorry, the Dutchman sings at the beginning. And hers e soars even more, so beautiful. And this builds up and builds up until we come to a big climax. Amazing. 
Maybe I can save you after all. And it gets more and more intense. Diese Ehre von Ach mit Seelen, das Ruhe lässt dich treibt. Für das du ärmst, da dir durch mich so treibt. together. Interesting. That they're a cappella at the end, just like the Dutchman was at the beginning. And then we have the redemption theme at the end in this beautiful key of E major, which is a very bright key. And we have this time a religioso ending. It's like Bach. So maybe we'll be blessed by the church after all. But the Dutchman has to go back to minor, minor key. Because the Dutchman most of the time sings in minor keys, you know? Usually. Usually minor. So even though he has a glimmer of hope at the beginning with Senta and in E major, which is probably one of the brightest and light filled keys, I think. Um, he has to go right back to minor when he has to ask, you know, is it really, are you really willing to g marry me? And you know what that means, you know? So it's business. Wirst du des Vaters Wahl nicht schelten, was er versprach, wie dürft es gelten? Yes, you have to give your, then he says, you know, you have to give yourself to me forever, and would you really be able to be true all that time? And Senta answers, in major. It's not in minor anymore. Because she represents hope. discussion continues and uh, she says you know I understand your pain if I could only give you consolation it's wonderful oh, and we have the redemption motive very high in the winds and he says what a beautiful sound to hear this you know then he gets passionate du bist ein Engel, eines Engels Liebe, if there's possibility for redemption for me, let it be here. And she says, yes, it will happen through me. But again, he says, do you realize what you're doing? And it goes into the minor key again. You know, it could be very dangerous. You're giving up your youth and you're devoting yourself, your, this beautiful virtue you have. You have to make sure it's you know, eternal truth and you really mean this, right? And then again, we answer in major. Always, she's, always, she's always very positive. And she says, I understand these things. I understand the, the uh, oh, oh, what's a good word in English for pflicht and uh, duties, I suppose. Duties of a, the holy duties that a, a woman has. Just be consoled. I'm the one who is going to be there for you. I'm the one who's going to save you. Mm -hmm. 
Wolken ist Weibes heilige Pflicht. Recognize that? It's never in major. It's usually in minor. It's this stormy Dutchman music, but it's in major this time. It comes twice like this. It's very rare and that it comes. So maybe she's going to, you know, calm the seas, make that stormy music into a, a storm of, l of love and devotion. Anyway, so that brings us, when she says, I commit myself to be true to you until death. So then we come to the coda of the entire scene. Like I said before, there's usually an exposition at some point, then there's middle stuff, discussions, and then there's a big finale. So we hear the trumpet playing this wonderful fanfare, like it's been decided everything's wonderful. Another theme from starting with Senta, which is a very important theme. Uh, was ist das Mächtig in mir leben? Du ständest unheil, sollst erblassen. He's, 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 he's getting hopeful now. She's very hopeful. And the thing builds and builds and builds into a climax. notes must have woken, made Dalan think, oh, I think it's time to go back in. <laughs> There's a lot of, before they kill themselves, the two of them, I'm going to interrupt. And we have <coughs> Wagner's version of... Uh, <laughs> Dalan says, do I hear wedding bells? Yes. Yes. S Santa says, here's my hand. Without regret, I give it to you. And that brings some more high notes, and we're end of the second act. And the second act ends with this wonderful melody that we had from Santa in, in full orchestra. <laughs> That's the end of the version that has breaks. It's not very interesting, is it? It's like Wagner thought, oh, well, I got to write something. I could have written that. But anyway, <laughs> but he just, you know, it's interesting that it was played in three acts until Cosima, his second wife, in Bayreuth in 1901, decided that it should be played in one act without a break. And so this music it actually continues on into the third act. As, and this is the way we do it here, which is the way most German houses play it as well. It's just not in America, because they want, always want to sell drinks in the <laughs> pauses, but not here. We're very serious about our art here, and we want to do what Wagner's original, original idea was. So it goes right on, right? Uh, <laughs> motive, isn't it? And then what do we get? Talk about a change. You recognize that music? It's our party music. And that leads up to a very, very excited 
and raucous, I should say, which means rowdy dance with all the Norwegian sailors, and a new tune. Now this tune, it's the sailor's call. Hello! What we had in the first act. It's just been turned into a theme now. Now, in this, there's our f f little tune that the Norwegians like in this opera. Oh, it keeps coming back all the time. Anyway, so we have a bunch of, a bunch of Norwegian soldiers having a good time now that they're on shore, drinking away, getting drunk having fun. I imagine liquor was less expensive back then. So they can have, <laughs> they didn't have to go to the Wien Monopola or something. You know, just, it was already there for them. So they sing their song. Steuermann, los die Wacht. Steuermann, her zu uns. Ho, her. Ist die Segel auf Ankerfest. Steuermann, her. And this develops into a big version of that wonderful dance theme, yeah? the ladies on board. It's been interesting that in the first act it's only men's chorus, the second act's only women's chorus, and now we're gonna have both together. So they come out and say, what's going on here? <laughs> say, I can't believe they are, they are dancing away, they're having a good time, and uh, the girls say, you know, it's awfully selfish of all of you standing around drinking and having a good time when there's another ship out there. Why don't we share some food with, and drink with them, you know? They, they deserve it. And the, the men say, well, that's a very strange ship. They don't answer when we call them. They don't hear anything. So the women are screaming at them, hey, sailors, answer, you know? Hey, Seeleute, hey, antworte doch. Answer. And all we get is this strange kind of strange sounding chord, which is played by two muted horns and a bassoon. It makes this kind of raspy <laughs> sound like this. Anyway, this leads to a kind of waltzy music where the men all say, well, they're obviously dead. They don't want to eat. That's what they say. I'm not making this up, you know. You know, that's what it says. Anyway, it's interesting, this section, because there's very kind of soft and legato music. And then there's dance music. Uh, it's like a kind of a lendler. Anyway, but also I find this strange that it's the redemption motive. It's, it's the same notes. It doesn't go on like the other one does, but I don't know. Maybe it means that someday they'll be redeemed too, but it's only for us to know? I don't know. They say, the men say, ha ha. It seems that they are dead. They don't want to eat and whatever. I'm translating on the spot. Not very well. And the ladies go, hey, say Leute, liegt ihr so faul schon im Nest? Ist heute für euch denn auch nicht ein Fest? The men go back to this melancholy thing. So the men are very dark about the whole thing, that they're like dragons guarding their booty but the women don't give up. Don't you want some nice wine? Anyway, they try again. They're all, all of them now are screaming at the ship. You know, sea people, wake up! Wach doch auf, wach doch auf! Nothing. It's a funny chord again. They try again, a half step higher. They think if they sing a half step higher, maybe they'll hear them. Sailor, sailor, wach doch auf! Nothing. Mm. 
Now the women take over this thing. Wahaftig, ja. Remember the men were saying they're dead at the beginning? This, now it goes up and everything switches. The women start singing this sad music. Wahaftig, ja. Sie scheinen tot. They don't need to eat. Sie haben Speis und Trank. Then the men get excited. Von fliegenden Holländer wisst ihr ja, sein Schiff, wie es lebt, wie es lebt, sein Kind. Okay? I didn't say the words right, I'm sorry. Wie es lebt, wie es lebt, seht ihr da. So they say there's the fliegende Holländer ship. You see what they're like. And uh, then they, the, the, basically it's the same thing in reverse what we had, where the men had before that the men were singing legato, spooky, and the women were singing with great energy. Now it's the women who are singing spooky and the men singing with great energy. Anyway, this goes on and on. It's a lovely scene for the chorus. It gives Senta and the Dutchman a chance to rest. And finally the women give up on the whole thing and they say, well, let's leave the, the poor Dutchman ship alone because nothing's going to happen anyway. So that's great because the men can get more drunk. They're happy about that. The, the women aren't watching. Uh, so they go, Juche, da gibt's die Fälle, lieb Nachbar, habe da. Zum Rand sein Glas, ein jeder Fälle, lieb Nachbar liefert uns den Trank. And it brings them into another version, uh, not another version, it leads them into another verse of their song. Steuermann, lass die Wacht, Steuermann, her zu uns. Except this time, there's some rumblings in the orchestra. There's something different. It's not the usual accompaniment we had before we had this. This time we have strange, noisy stuff going on. Steuermann, lass die Wacht, Steuermann, her zu uns. Oh, hey, oh, hey, oh. Hear that? It's like the waves are starting to move. Something's happening. And then you hear this motive. What is that? It's a version of the Hollander's motive. It's not quite the same. It's actually inverted a little bit. It's a fifth instead of a fourth. It's usually... It's this. But it's there. And the, the motives get stronger and stronger under the men's chorus as they're going on. You hear funny little things. Like, you know, uh, just a lot of the... You know... It goes on and on. And the men get louder and louder and louder. And finally... finally woke up the Dutch crew. I don't know why it took so long, but it finally happens for some reason. And then the, you hear this, this scary music. It's the, the Dutchman's music, and it's even wilder than we've heard it before, with the whole crew singing from the distance. <laughs> It makes the Norwegians very nervous. They say, what is that? Is it, sp is it ghosts? What's going on? So the, the Norwegian chorus tries to start their song again and sing as loud as they can to drown out the other chorus. But it doesn't work. And you have both choruses singing at the same time, which is quite interesting. I see if I can do that. <laughs> Let's sing loud. Steuermann, lass die Wacht. Steuermann, her zu uns. Hoi, 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 Steuermann, lass die Wacht. Hoi, 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 hoi,
oh, hey, oh, hey. And the, the, the Norwegians are still going, da, 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 da. They're always doing that, you know. Uh, sing it loud, sing it loud, sing loud. And this goes on and on. But eventually, the, the Dutch win. I guess they're just louder. I don't know. But anyway, they, maybe there's more of them. I don't know. And it goes on and on and on, and the, the thing gets more diabolical and more crazy. Uh, Lisa, Lisa. scares the Norwegians away. They all go away to their houses, I guess. We have the Dutchman motive, the redemption motive. It's interesting. Dutchman and redemption motive together, but they're kind of melancholy now. And then we have this strange chord. as if, hmm, maybe things are not going to go so well. Of course, here comes Eric. Here comes the tenor. Uh, you know he's going to mess things up. Oh, sorry. My... Let's try that again. Was muss ich hören? Gott, was muss ich sehen? Wahrheit ist es Tat. Oh, frage nicht. He says, what's going on? What did I hear? Is it possible? What, what, what am I seeing? And uh, Senta says, don't ask. I can't tell you the answer. And he's definitely, he's heard, oh my God, she's going to get married to somebody else. And we uh, again hear these chords. That we, remember this? There. Welche Gewalt verführte dies? Welche Gewalt verführte dies so schnell? Grausam zu brechen. Anyway, they have a big fight about this. He says, How can you marry somebody who you've just met? You must be crazy. Nicht weiter. Schwein. Ich muss. Ich muss. She says, Don't follow me any further. I have to do this. I have to do this. And she says, I have a high duty to do this thing. And he says, what high duty? I don't understand. You promised me that you'd be, free to, you'd be true to me forever. And she says, what? I did? And he says, Santa, oh Santa, you, you deny this? And uh, we have this very sad cavatina from Eric, where he tries to win her back by talking about times when they were very happy together in the past, and, and that how, his, how her father trusted him so much to take care of her, and how they used to watch the ships going away together, and they had wonderful times. Willst jedes Tags du nicht dich mehr entsinnen, als du zu mir mich riefest in das Tal, als dir des Hochlands Blume zu gewinnen, mutvoll ich trug mich wieder ohne Zahl. There's the Hochlands Blume, the Highland flower. You hear it? Als dir des Hochlands Blume zu. Yes, they're in the Highlands. Yes. That's right. Anyway, somebody once said that this, this music is almost like Wagner's attempt at Bellini. Try Because Wagner loved Bellini. He loved that beautiful, long, beautiful lines. And just so to, to kind of give you the idea, I found a translation in Italian. So you can see, you put, almost pretend it's Bellini. You know, this is uh, just a little taste. Quel giorno hai forse nell'oblio sepolto e che dalla rupe mi chiamaste a te quando il fiore del piccolo torracolto sfida 
quando ardito il periglioso colle, qual masso alto sporgente non ramenti. Anyway, you get the idea. Anyway, anyway, anyway. anyway. But, you know, in the old days, people used to sing these things in all kinds of translations, you know. I mean, it was standard practice, you know. Even before, like, 20, 30 years ago in Germany, you know, you'd sing everything in German, and the Italians, you know, would sing things. It even happened in sometimes, even 100, more than 100 years ago, that some people would sing different languages in the same performance. You know, they'd do Boris good enough in New York, maybe, and they'd have a few Russians who would sing in Russian, and some people who didn't know the Russian would sing in Italian. You better talk about understanding each other, but, you know. But indeed, um, you know, I mean, some translation. I just, I like opera in the original language because I think that the composers had the idea of, you know, the sound of the text in their mind when they wrote the notes. You know, there's something about Carmen singing, Oh, je suis vraiment trop bête. In French, in German, it just doesn't make it. Ach, was bin ich für ein Dummkopf. You know, it's just, uh, <coughs> it's just not the same, you know. Anyway. Anyway, <coughs> that's the translation in the book. You should look at Ja, was bin ich für ein Dummkopf? Yeah, great. All right. Anyway, so anyway, back to the Flying Dutchman. Yes. Anyway, Eric tries to win her over with this beautiful aria. You know, even has beautiful big high notes in it. Still doesn't impress her, you know. I'll see that meinen Nacken schlag, gestandest du. That doesn't even help. So, you know. Anyway, guess who's listening on the side of the stage? Or not the stage, the <coughs> side of the town. The Dutchman has heard all this and he sees Senta's a little bit moved by this, actually, in the end. And so he says, Oh my God, it's all over. <laughs> Fellohan! Ah, Fellohan! This total pandemonium where everybody, the orchestra is playing as loud as possible. Eric's screaming, what do I see? And the Dutchman says, goodbye, Senta. Senta says, stop, you unhappy one. And it's just a big, big thing that leads to a trio because the Dutchman says, I can't stay here. Obviously, I have to have a, a woman who's going to be true to me until death. Eric is, is terrified by this man. And uh, Senta's beside herself, and the uh, Dutchman says, Up with the sails, the red sails, we're leaving. Segel auf, Ankelos, sag lieber wohl auf Ewigkeit im Lande. Fort auf das Meer, zwei fest, du an meine Treue. And we have a big trio, which is the same music we had at the beginning, right? Except all three of them are singing at once about their feelings about things, and uh, it's wonderful music. I love it. Anyway, by the time it ends, uh, uh, we have this big uh, mm, climax. Erfahre das Geschick, vor dem ich dich bewahre. Basically, the Hollander is now going to explain his whole situation, who he is, why he has to go through what he has to go through. He says, I am damned to the most horrible fate. I'd rather be dead ten times than go through this. And he says, only through a woman can I be rescued from this terrible curse. A woman who will be true to me until death. And you, Santa, promised me you would be. But not before God. So we didn't have the official ceremony yet, so that means that you are lucky and released. This will save you. But just to warn you, I don't know why he's saying that since she rele she's released anyway, but he says, just so you know, what happens to people, women who promise to be true to me and break the promise, they get eternal damnation. <laughs> But he says, you will be saved from this. Goodbye. And she says, wait, wait. I know you very well. I know about your fate. I've known you since I first saw you. The end of your suffering is here. It's me 
who is here to rescue you and I will be true to you and you will find your salvation. It's interesting that she always sings high B's when she's talking about this. I guess that's the note of, of I will save you. There's a lot of high B's for Senta. Eric says she's lost her mind and he calls everybody in, help, help, what's going on? And still it, Hollander doesn't believe her. He says, you don't know me. You can't even m imagine who I am. Ask the seas from all zones. Ask the seamen who've gone through the ocean. They know this ship. They know that I am the Flying Dutchman. That's my name. And the chorus from the Flying Dutchman ship sings again their thing. Oh, hey, hey, hey. And all the chorus people are out and go, Santa, 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 what are you doing? Dutchman's gone. She runs to the top of a cliff. She says, Pri um, pr prize your angel and the, uh, the offer that was made. She says, here I am. I'm standing here. True to you, high B. Ta-da! I'll be true to you until death. Beastum That crash is, well, I'm never sure if the crash is when she jumps into the sea and makes a lot of noise. There's another tam-tam there, you know? <laughs> or because the ship of the Dutchman sinks immediately when she jumps in. Because it means, because she sacrificed herself, finally he's been released from this terrible curse. The goddess Engel has had mercy, and that means the two of them will be finally united, like a la Tristan and Isolde, you know? in heaven, up there, you know, and <clears throat> it's interesting, I'll get to that in a second, because first, you know, she dives in, and uh, they're united, and we have the triumphant version of the, of the uh, redemption motive, after she's jumped. I can't help it. Here's the, uh, what she sang at the end of her aria. Remember this crazy music? And the original version is very simple. Just get big chords. This is the original very Beethoven-like. But later on, you know, Wagner changed the ending. He kept, you know, tinkering with the piece a little bit. And um, during the time he was writing Tristan, he couldn't help himself to rewrite the ending and make it more, how do you say, ethereal and more atmospheric. He even added a harp. And the poor harp player has to come in to play basically <laughs> One, uh, 20 seconds at the end of the piece, <laughs> and also in the overture, there's a place that he changed something. I'll talk about the overture quickly, because I know I'm probably going on and on, and I forgot my watch. I have no idea what the time it is. Probably nine at night already. <laughs> but anyway, but anyway, so in the revised version, instead of this, you know, we have, we have the, the motive. With waves. Jozo ending. Now that's the ending you're probably used to hearing, because that's the one that's usually played, not the original ending. It's, but it is very beautiful, but it, it does have a slightly different sound, as you know, than the rest of the piece. like the Tannhäuser in the first scene in the Venusberg that he wrote a whole other scene that 
I think it's wonderful. I love it. It's fantastic music, but it's much more into the Tristan period than the Tannhäuser period. Then some people think, well, it doesn't exactly match. But I think it works because the Venusberg is supposed to be slightly different than the rest of the opera because it's a, it's a pit of sin. And so why not have overly romantic music that doesn't quite match the pure music of the other people? Anyway, so there, that's the end of the opera, but I promised you I'd talked about the overture quickly because he wrote it after the opera. <laughs> so the, the overture basically is, it's a kind of parade of greatest hits from the rest of the opera. And uh, what's interesting is he decided that when he was going to do the redemption theme, which is played by the winds, again, uh, often I said, when Senta sings it and when it's played in the orchestra, it's played by wind players. It has a special sound to it, but like I said, there's a lot of wind in this opera, you know? I think Anna Russell also said something like, why does, when, why do the Germans always need so much more wind than anybody else in their music? <laughs> but anyway, there's a lot of wind in this. But anyway, so the overture starts with the Dutchman theme and these open fifths, right? For me, which means open sea, horizon. It make, it's a very spacious feeling, right? themes are, well, all of our Dutchman themes are ready. Dutchman. And we've got our we've got that. We have the stormy seas. And we have this. Dutchman's despair theme. Then we come to the redemption already. After that's calmed down, all the wind players start in playing the redemption theme in a very pure, beautiful way. And there's an English horn playing the theme, which is unusual because there's no English horn in the rest of the opera. So he thought about when he was writing the overture, ah, oh, that's a great idea, I'll put in the, an English horn. The English horn, I think, plays ten bars or something. <laughs> so usually you have the, the second oboe has an English horn there sitting, waiting, so he's ready to play. And so we get a very beautiful, pure version of the redemption. Anyway, that goes on with the winds further, etc. Anyway, they, that leads on to our famous two-note figure that goes through the whole opera, right? That the Norwegians love this one, right? leads us to the main part of the overture, the Allegro, which uses the Dutchman's stormy music theme. So on and so on and so on. Um, uh, what's interesting is then he takes a theme, which is the big, you know, from later on in the opera, and he makes it into a little, a, a very humoristic version in the overture, because we have the hollow ho, the sailor music.
nice sailor's music, right? And right away we get back to the storm music. It's interesting to have those things juxtaposed with each other, you know? It's, I think it's just trying to get all the themes in, you know? When you go... Storm. And then we have Storm and the Sailors music at the same time. The character of it is so different than it is in the opera, but it, it's there. Anyway, this leads up to a lot of stuff, and finally we get a tr really triumphant version of the redemption theme. I have to play it because it's so good. Very chromatic music. Right? There it is. And anyway, that goes on and on and on. And finally, we come to the coda of the overture. And uh, this is the last thing I will tell you about. Um, we have, finally, when we come to the end, a very dramatic music in the violins carrying on, which brings us to the redemption theme in its, all of its glory. First we have the Dutchman. <laughs> and scrambling from the violins. <gasps> Senta sings at the end of her aria, right? And then it repeats itself one more time, and we get the, uh, the Dutchman motive at the end. normal ending to the overture. That's the original version. And that's what we're playing, by the way. But later on in his life, he decided to rewrite the end of the overture. And that's where the harp player comes in. And listen to this music, just how different it is than the rest. And it's so, harm it's so chromatic and brutal. It's just really in the, in the Tristan world. So we've had, the, we've had this already, right? before. with the harp. That's the piece. Okay.